Okay, so to make this stuff happen, the magic happen, let's go ahead and get an account set up at beanstalkapp.com. Go to the pricing and sign up. You'll notice they have a lot of tiers in their pricing plans. They all give you different amounts of repositories and users and also the amount of different areas that you can deploy your code to. So if you also want more than just production like staging and another development area, uh, the different plans have more of those that you can use. If you want to just try it out and see if you really like how this works, go ahead and try out our free trial, which is right down here. There's a little link that says we have a free trial. It's a great way of just checking it out. Let's go ahead and fill this out and get, get started on the Beanstalk app. Okay, we got this filled out. Let's go ahead and create our account. That's all there is to it. The only thing else we have to do now is we want to create our first repository. There's a couple ways you could do this. I am actually using the GUI called Tower that works with Git. Tower, if you look in its manage repositories, gives you the option to create a Beanstalk repository. But I'm just going to go ahead and since we're talking about Beanstalk more than we really are about Tower, I'm going to go on Beanstalk and create our first repository. Now I've already actually gone ahead and done that, but I'm going to walk you through it here and then we'll eventually just use the one I have already set up. So inside the repositories, all you have to do is create a repository. Go ahead and give it a name. We'll just call it video test. It's going to be a Git repository. It's going to give you the repository path. We're going to just continue on. Set permissions. It's really just about us right now. This All we're doing is one user. So go ahead and continue. It's really nice. See, Beanstalk actually works with Tower. So you have this option to open in Git Tower. and Or you could just copy your URL and then create or clone is what it's called, the Git repository in Tower. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how to clone this repository. This isn't really a how to use Git video tutorial. It's more or less using Beanstalk app for deployment. But let's go ahead and clone just so you understand how to at least get yourself, get your stuff into version control. And then we'll just skip ahead to I've already got a created repository and we'll go through the whole deployment process. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this URL. I could use the open and get tower, but just in case you're not using tower, I'm going to just show you how to do it because cloning is pretty much the same. I'm still going to use tower, but here we go. So now that I have that URL, I'm going to go to manage my repositories and I'm going to clone a remote repository. And the very first thing is what is its URL? I'm going to go ahead and click and paste it. And now it wants my username and password, which we just created. So, and then it wants to know where you want to clone this to. So basically where will this exist? locally on your computer. So let's go ahead and browse that location. We'll create a new folder. We'll just call it demo and we'll choose it and we'll go ahead and clone the repository. Perfect. Now that we have that repository clone, well now what happens is in that folder that we just created, it will actually put a hidden folder. So if you're viewing hidden folders and files, you'd be able to see it. But if you're not, there's a dot git folder in there. And that dot git folder basically tells git this is where a repository is. And inside this .git folder basically contains all the information about our repository. And Git recognizes this folder and knows that this location is a Git repository. So the first thing we want to do is make our first commit, which is basically let's get our Drupal website into version control. So let's take Drupal, all of its files we've downloaded. I'm just going to move them over or copy them over into our site. Now we'll go to Tower. Let's go look at our repository that we just created. And now we'll notice that Tower recognizes, whoa, there's all these new files and folders. So the first thing we need to do inside Git is called stage these files. Staging is basically just a, okay, these are the files I definitely want to commit. It's kind of a powerful thing because even though you're working on a bunch of stuff, you may have done two things at once. It's a way of choosing part of what you did and commit it and not necessarily all of it. It's pretty cool. It's something you'll start to learn and use down the road. So let's get our first commit. I've now staged all the files. Let's give this a commit message. We'll just call it first commit. And let's go ahead and commit these. Now, right now I'm working in my master branch. Normally I would probably create a dev branch and work in that, but for now we're just kind of trying to get things in there. So let's get this into our master branch for now and let's go ahead and commit this. So once you commit the files, another thing to understand about Git is even though they're committed, they're still committed locally. I still have to push these changes to the actual remote repository to get those into the final version control system inside the Beanstalk app website. So the first thing that I'm going to do is going to, I'm going to push these up into the origin master branch and I'm going to create the branch 
in origin called master because locally it's master but we don't really have one in the empty repository on Beanstalk. And then I'm going to track this so I'll know if new things happen in that branch. So now we'll see all the codes getting in. It's all being pushed to Beanstalk. Everything is done. Let's go ahead and take a look. Perfect. Notice now in the website, we're looking at that repository and its activity, and we see that we have made our first commit. So now we have our files in version control, and we're ready to start doing what we need to do. So we're just going to set up a quick website, and in the next lesson, we're going to cover how we can use deployment with our version controlled Drupal website to make so when we make changes inside of a feature and commit those, that Beanstalk can then push those manually or automatically to our production server.